Hi there, this is Spitfire25565 with Game Mode 5, and today we will be looking at a little bit more of the Envious Host server control platform. Now, most of this should actually be standard if you're already familiar with this platform from other hosts. However, some of it you may not. Other hosts may not have it implemented the same way. And we're going to go ahead and look at all of them. Now, this is our main page where it informs us that this is Spitfire 25565 server. Uh, we went over a lot of this on the last video. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the files option here. Now, that allows us to look at config or configuration files plugins it gives us FTP file access one of two ways and we'll explain that a little bit later and backup now first things first we have to learn about config files uh, these are possibly the most important part of running a server because if you get these wrong a lot of very bad things can happen now um, as you can see when I mouse over for instance the name of the file um, my mouse turns into the little hand which means I can click on them some of these have actually been turned into drop-down menus which is great because it makes it a lot harder to mess up and it lets you know at a glance how everything is set so for instance we already know we can spawn monsters player versus player or PvP is enabled Hell world, meaning the nether, is on. Online mode, enabled, which means that uh, this server does not cater to cracked or uh, non-premium users. Alright, spawn animals, enabled. Whitelisting, disabled, which means that you don't have to necessarily have my permission to join. Uh, Whitelisting is a great concept. It does happen. It, it does uh, keep out a lot of griefers and things like that. But it also keeps a lot of your potential players, you know, future friends, that kind of thing, from being able to join and find you. It's it's kind of a kind of a thin line you gotta walk if you're gonna be a whitelisted server. You, there's just certain things you gotta know. Certain things that come with the territory. All right. Allow Nether enabled. Now, the view distance. This is how many chunks. Now, a chunk is currently a, a 16 by 16 by 256 block. It means, for example, uh, from where you're standing right now in game, 16 blocks to the right of you, 16 blocks to the left of you, and from sky to bedrock, 256. All right. Now that's that view distance is how many of those units you want to send to a player at any time. Cutting it down can sometimes reduce lag. Cutting it up can sometimes reduce lag depending on the kind of lag the players are experiencing. For instance, if you have extremely good internet and a really bad computer <laughs> um, you know you're gonna want to have different settings on that than if you have the exact opposite a really good computer and really bad internet it just depends on what you're doing and what's best for you okay the level seed now that's gonna be the seed of the level that you want to play for instance um, you know one seed that I really like to play is game mode 5 seriously I love the seed mainly because there's shelter right under you when you spawn I mean you know there's also iron right there by you anyway moving on allow flying uh, that's disabled uh, to your server allow it or disallow it uh, game mode that's gonna be survival or creative now in the future other game modes may be added to this uh, you know, when uh, <coughs> when the official adventure mode is added, you may see that there, as well as any other miscellaneous game modes you may see. Now, difficulty. Easy, normal, hard. Hardcore for servers is not an 
exactly a recognized game mode, but you can set that up with plugins. Now, a uh, server message. Right now, it's set to a Minecraft server. You can set that to be pretty much whatever you'd like. We're going to set ours to hello, your turb. And get our capitalization right there. All right. Enable query false. Uh, it's more of an advanced thing. Uh, query or query, depending on how you pronounce it, um, is it's basically a, a protocol that allows the server to, or it allows other places to ask the server questions or queries. Um, you know, how many players, um, who are those players, things like that. A lot of voting sites will use it. Uh, you may want to think about turning that on. All right. Level type, default. Uh, here you can actually set that to be uh, default. You could set that to uh, super flat. Uh, it's it's really just up to you. There may be other terrain types in the future, um, large biomes, things like that, that you may want to set that to. Um, that's entirely up to you. And you can find all of those settings online. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, generate big dungeons. Um, that's entirely up to you. Well, whatever you want. All right, maximum build height. I don't know why anyone would ever touch this, but that's what that is. You could just set that to 256, leave it alone. NPCs, you know, those annoying little testificates. Whether you want those or not, true or false. Um, snooper enabled. Now, Notch actually uh, tweeted about this and posted on his blog about this. Basically, it doesn't do a whole lot, but it does send a little bit of information back to Mojang to let them know um, what kind of... Um, server hardware you're running this on and some other miscellaneous things uh, I, I recommend turning that on leaving it as true because it allows the team at Mojang to know exactly what they're trying to support okay um, hardcore false apparently I was wrong hardcore is an approved game mode I don't know when that happened okay anyway um, texture pack. This is where you can actually hard code a texture pack in and allow users to all standardize around that texture pack. And then generate structures. This is, uh, you know, whether you want NPC villages and, um, you know, all those pre-built structures like the little desert wells, um, uh, strongholds and the like. All right. Now we're just going to go ahead and save. All right, and let's see. Let's go to our ops or operators.txt. Currently, you can see that it is empty. Now, we'll have to add ourselves to that so we can have operator or ops or, you know, super awesome server owner powers. Okay, Spitfire 25565. Uh, now, from my experience, this, uh, this file is not case sensitive. However, I always try to make sure that my ops.txt is written properly. I don't know why, but I always assume if they do put a feature in there where it is case sensitive, it'll be less work later and less broken things that I have to track down. All right, we're saving that. Band IPs, pretty much you can leave that alone for now anyway. Band players, you can pretty much leave that alone for right now because you can ban players and unban players in game but it has to keep that uh, track of that somewhere and then whitelisted players again you could do that from within game alright we're gonna go ahead and go back now plugins now this is actually a list of of plugins that you can uh, instantly download from Envious Host, M meaning it's already done for you. You don't have to go and track it down. Um, now there is there is a little bit of a downside to this. For instance, uh, the name you have to assume what it does, or go and Google it elsewhere. Personally, I use Bucket Dev for all my plugins. 
but you can do however you would like. Um, this is a nice list, and also you can assume that Envious Host keeps this list updated with really cool plugins. Um, it is somewhere to start, and it is somewhere you can cut your teeth on editing those configuration files for those plugins. Um, it does look like some of them do include descriptions. Very interesting. All right. Now, um, I will let you guys look through that and let's see now we will before we go and move on to something else we will install at least one of these uh, let's see alright world edit is always a good option to have now I'm not sure if this is the most recent version of World Edit that they're offering us here, but we will take a look. Okay, let's go back here. As you can see now next to World Edit, we have a green plus sign. It means that that's been installed. All right. Go back. Now, our configuration file would not have automatically um, been generated. So, we just restart our server. Now, we go back to Files, and then into Config Files. And you can see here, in our description, we've got plugin config file in plugins world edit config.yml we click it now this one doesn't have any fancy schmancy uh, check boxes or anything like that but if you read through it you can actually pretty much see what it's doing I would caution you never ever ever put a tab in these files it will break it also keep in mind that there are certain things that are necessary for instance there are four spaces here there's a reason for that and there are no spaces here there's a reason for that just be very careful until you get used to it otherwise you will end up having to track down the most annoying things in the world like a space all right going back you can set that to pretty much whatever you'd like all right, going back. All right. Now, FTP file access. All right, now, you should be able to, if you already have something set up like FileZilla or any FTP client, I personally like FileZilla, um, you should be able to put in your FTP username right here, all right, and your multicraft password, which is start out for me. Thank you. Uh, and then this IP address and be able to access your server so that you can manipulate these files in a more controlled environment. Um, some people feel that they have more control if they can see and look at everything. Other people don't. That's entirely up to you, and I say kudos to anyone who uses it that way, and we will have a video on that in the future. They do also use the default port 21 for FTP. Uh, just throwing that out there. Okay, going back. All right, backup. Um, you can hit start to back up your world in its current state. See how it says, backup done, ready for download, created at a time. Now, uh, we can actually use our FTP access to, uh, to get that backup of the server. 
And again, you can see we connect to that IP address. That port, that's the default port. You, in most clients, you can leave that blank. It'll just assume it's 21. And then your username, your multicraft login password. Uh, and you should also be able to restore your server from an earlier backup. You just hit the restore button and it will undo everything that has gone on since the last time you backed up. That could be dangerous and it could make users hate you because they lost part of their world. Okay, anyway, moving back. That completes our look at the files area of the Multicraft Envious Host platform. In our next video, we will take a look at the advanced area and we will move on from there. I'm Spitfire25565 with Game Mode 5. Like, subscribe, comments, please.